feel like I've just merged with what was already there. I've integrated. I simply included the cosmos and all aspects of the cosmos into my mind, which is where it was and, and where it, it, it resides. Um, there were great teachers that, like, that came along, like Krishnamurti used to say things like, I am the world, the world is me. And it was a very helpful stepping stone idea to say that there is no world outside of your consciousness. Uh, this is what quantum physics is showing us, that, that they're, they couldn't get the experimenter out of the experiment. <laughs> uh, it's just like six decades ago, and that because they couldn't get the experimenter out of the experiment, it just proved that everything was connected, and that there was no such thing as an empirical, objective world apart from the observer or the perceiver, that it was all completely connected. That's what forgiveness is. Uh, in, it would be like being the observer in quantum physics terms, you know, where, where you know that you're unified with what you're observing. And that's why it's so peaceful, because where could the threat come from? If, if you were everything, and there was nothing other than your mind and your awareness, what, what's going to threaten you? You know, there can be no terrorist outside if your mind is all-encompassing. So, that's what the mind training is about. When we use meditation, when you use a workbook of A Course in Miracles, it's training you to start to see that the thoughts that you think you think, and the images that you think you see, are literally the same. We don't really have an inner world, but just where we have thinking, and an outer world of, of, thought, of images. Uh, he uses workbook lessons like, my thoughts are images that I have made. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. He's literally trying to make a connection between the thoughts that you think you think, and the images that you think you see. And he's saying, it's all mental. Uh, in fact, that, I think that was Morpheus' uh, definition to Neo, the, the matrix is the digital projection of your mental self, <laughs> is what he, he told Neo. And really, once you start to, to allow this merge to occur in your mind, you realize that it's, it's all mental. So is forgiveness an allowing? Yeah, you might say that, that that state of healed mind wholeness is already there. So you're just allowing yourself to experience the gift, uh, which is is freely given, you know, it's, it's like it's, forgiveness is accessing a state of healing that has always been there, and it's just you're allowing yourself permission to experience it. And so it's, it's an acceptance, it's an allowance, uh, but it's not really a surrender in the sense that it just seems like a surrender from the ego's perspective. The ego is always like, what do I got to give up? What's, what's going to cost me, you know? The healing sounds good, but what's it going to cost me? And really, there is no cost in which an, a, it's a natural state of, of mind. Would the cost be uh, no more complaining? Yeah, the, the, the cost, to, in the ego's perspective, yeah. It would, it would cost you, I mean, it's really the illusion of a cost. You know, as if, like, like you would lose something. But wholeness doesn't even know what loss means, but to the ego, it seems like Whatever this state is, it's going to involve some kind of loss. Yeah, I can give a practical example of that. Like the ego, of course, wants to roar up and say that that's loss of, of something. And I was guided to, to leave my dogs before we went on a Europe tour like a couple of years ago. And, and it came to me like gradually. And this was like something that I felt like, oh my god, it's going so fast, but okay, I'm ready, and I went for it. And it was like perfect, they got to this perfect home, and everything just unfolded beautifully. And then during the tour, all of these dogs just came up to me, it was like all of the homes that we stayed at, it was like dogs, and... Oh, she's right. Yeah, and Poe, Poe is here. <laughs> right out the window, on cue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's like so beautiful, it's like... We are just being shown that what seems to be a loss, like when we are being guided to let go of something, that first it can feel pretty hard sometimes, other times it might feel very easy to let go of something, but we always get it back in another form that we've never expected to, and we can never understand 
how it's going to come, and we just have to trust that everything will be unfolding just beautifully, and you can never ever imagine. I mean, it's like you just let go and you just trust that everything will just be more amazing than I could ever think of it, and then it just comes to you and it just flows. So, yeah. Well, when you talked about the opinions earlier, that was like a direct connect to my identity. You know, to have no opinions, that was the ego loosening there. Was like, I mean, that's what I felt. It was like, I mean, and I can, but wow. You know, that was just like, yeah, I mean, somebody just... I like, like the way you said it, a big rusty bolt that just yeah. dropped off your head. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Clunk. Yeah, I see things in visuals and stuff like that. Yeah. That's not a question then. So is the ego a way that, since it's all God, then is it a way for us, like a catalyst, to learn to forgive? In other words, we, as, as human beings, we tend, tend to judge because we're in duality, and then we drop from duality into oneness and going back and forth. But if we, it, it, so is the ego a made up thing that we then can say, oh, I need to forgive this. That seems to be for what it says in my life. And I look at it and go, oh, I think I know something here. This is dangerous. I don't know anything. The ego thinks it knows everything. And then I get to go back to forgiveness. And I wonder why we get off our knees ever. I just can't figure it out. There's no point. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it is, the only thing that you can do with an ego is, is forgive it. In other words, when we were talking, God doesn't forgive, and we don't have to forgive God for anything, but it's like this, it's almost like when, you, when you're looking up and there's like an eclipse, you know, where the moon is coming across the sun, and it seems to be like a, a dark spot, whatever size or however the eclipse looks. So it's more just like releasing the dark spot. The, like, love is all that there is, you know. The, the Beatles, love is all there is, you know, all you need is love, love is all there is. It's like the ego is, some people have said it's like an acronym for edging God out. It's, it's like uh, an attempt to not be aware of the only thing you can ever fully be aware of. Uh, the only thing we can ever truly know is love. Uh, we can never know all these concepts, you know, they're shaky. Uh, we forget them all the time. We learn them, we forget them, we learn them again. We forget them. They're temporary, they come, they go, but it's more just like that eclipse, just, it's just an opportunity to forgive. And then, when we fully have raised up, we'll say, the ego to the light, and the ego just dissolves and disappears, then that's just an awareness of, of what is and has always been. So the ego is just a belief, and as we start to withdraw our investment in it, you know, we stay on our knees, we stay in a place of humbleness, show me, show me the way, uh, the ego just like shrinks and shrivels up and just dissolves away. It's not a battle. It's not like love and the ego are not battling. It's just that when we try to hide or hold on to beliefs that have nothing to do with reality, then the ego seems to have a temporary existence. And that's what we're about, is, is dissolving that illusion of separation. So the ego is the symbol of separation, in other words. It's yeah. the symbol of separation, and because we've never really separated, it's never happened. Yeah. Except for in our heads. Yeah, sometimes people say, is the ego like, it's supposed to be like Satan or something? And, and it's like, well, the ego doesn't have any real power. It's, it can't really you can give it power, right? fight the if fight. You're like, oh, well, this is bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, if you give your mind's energy to something that's, it's false, then it seems to perpetuate an illusion of that falsity. Mm -hmm. And once you unplug it, it just disappears. It's like the, the Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch of the West. Mm -hmm. You know, this green face and this crooked nose and this shrieking voice. And then a bucket of water, that's all it took, uh, was a bucket of water. All this flying around and screaming and flying monkeys, you know, and all this big drama, and then a bucket of water and it's, it's over. There's just a hat <laughs> and a gown. Well, There's the nothing ego. left. That's ego. like the ego. Or, it's like also in The Wizard of Oz, you know, when they've got the wizard is, is behind the curtain, and he's using all of these, he's got a microphone to magnify the voice, and he's using all these levers to make this big image that looks very threatening. <laughs> and then the dog, Toto, comes and pulls the curtain. And as soon as the curtain starts to get pulled, they're all watching, you know, Dorothy and all of her friends. The wizard just says, pay no, 
pay no attention. He gets his mouth over the microphone, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, the ego is the man behind the curtain. It's, it's this tiny little thing that's using all this, uh, you might say, technology, it's using uh, time and space to try to appear to be really big and strong, including solar flares and tsunamis and hurricanes, you know, which to human beings, this can be a disastrous, you know. I just came from Australia and they showed this Nicolas Cage movie that's out now called Knowing. And this solar flare just hits the earth. Well, it takes about a couple seconds to wipe out the earth. Not just the surface and the inhabitants on the surface, but under the surface, you know, just like completely raise the whole place. And, and yet that was just another uh, illusion of the ego's tricks. You know, to, as if you could be destroyed, but when your spiritual reality can never be destroyed.